I've said it before and I'll say it again. You don't have to have a fancy degree, or any degree in fact, in order to be a scientist and to do ecological research right in your own backyard. So today I thought I'd show you how to do the really simple research technique that got me my master's degree. For my master's degree, I was studying ground-dwelling insects, specifically dung beetles, but other people in my research group were interested in other kinds of insects and arthropods that live on the ground, so we used what are called pitfall traps. A pitfall trap is basically just a cup with the lip of the cup flush with the surface of the ground so that ground-dwelling arthropods walk across the surface of the ground and fall into the cup and drown and die, and then we can sample them to do research on them. The reason that it's better to have have dead arthropod samples for research is that it's very difficult to keep arthropods alive and not eating one another in a research situation and also because it's very easy for them to escape if they're still alive so lots of good reasons for us to have dead samples instead. The best part about pitfall trapping well I guess there's actually like two best parts. Um, so the first best part is that it's really simple and easy to learn how to do, so it doesn't take a lot of practice or a lot of time learning. And the second best thing about it is that it takes very simple and cheap and easy to get materials, so literally anybody can do pitfall trapping. In order to make your own backyard pitfall trap, you'll need to gather a few materials. You'll need a plastic cup, some water, some dish soap, and some wire mesh. The wire mesh is technically optional, but I really like to put it on top of the cup because it prevents any of our larger animal friends that might be in our backyards from accidentally falling into the trap. We're just trying to get insects and other arthropods. If you'd specifically like to look for dung beetles, like what I was doing in my master's research, you can also use a plastic takeout fork and put a little scoop of like dog poop on it. Don't use human poop because that's really gross, but if you have a dog, you can scoop up a little dog poop on the fork and balance that on top of the whole trap assembly and that'll attract more dung beetles. Okay, so I've picked this area of my yard to put the pitfall trap because it's kind of out of the way of the traffic of like the dog and the people, so it shouldn't be disturbed over here. So I have my plastic cup and I have a trowel so that I can dig a hole in the ground right here. Um, so I'm gonna try to kind of estimate how big this cup is and just sort of make a hole so I'm going to want the hole to be basically as deep or as tall as the cup is and the same diameter. But don't worry if you don't get it perfect because you can kind of adjust it by digging out more or packing in some dirt if the hole's too big. Um, so I think I've got a little plug here. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull this out and yeah, I need to get some of this loose dirt out of here too. Yeah. <laughs> so for my master's research, I had 20 sites, and we put 10 of these traps in each site, so I had to dig 200 holes. Okay, here's a hole. Um, so now we'll test the cup. Nope. Okay. Need to make it a little deeper. Do -do -do. And maybe also a little wider, because of course the hole will like get more narrow as you try to dig down. So I'm just kind of scraping it to widen it a little bit. Okay, that might be better. Yeah, that's closer to the surface of the ground. Just a little bit more. Okay, that's probably good. Yeah. They're hitting some tree roots anyway. Okay, so now I've got this cup with a hole, but there's still lots of like gaps. So I'm gonna take the dirt from the plug that I dug out in order to make the hole and kind of like pack it around the cup to make like a flush ground surface around the cup. Because again, we want bugs to sort of walk on the surface of the ground and like not realize that anything's different and just trip, well not trip, but <laughs> you know, fall into the hole unawares. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Dump that dirt out. Okay, so now we've got a cup and the lip of the cup is pretty much flush with the surface of the ground. So now I'm going to put in just like a little drip of dish soap 
and then pour in the water. Um, so the dish soap is just to sort of break up the surface tension of the water a little bit um, because bugs are so small that they otherwise they would kind of like float on the surface of the water and not actually drown. Um, so we want them to drown. So um, you can see I filled the cup maybe like half-ish, maybe a little over halfway with the soapy water. Um, I don't want to fill it too full because if it's too full then the bugs could like fall in and then maybe like jump right out or if it rains while the trap is out the water level will rise and I don't want everything to sort of get washed out. Um, so I think half or just over halfway full is probably good. And then I've got my wire mesh. I'm gonna put that on top and sort of bend over the edges. Be careful, cause like, of course the cut ends of the wire mesh are gonna be sharp and you don't wanna hurt your fingers. Um, but again, this wire mesh is to keep like small mammals like mice and voles and uh, other small animals like frogs and birds and stuff out of here. We don't want anybody falling in here except arthropods or bugs or insects or whatever. Um, so basically this is the pitfall trap and I could just leave it like this if I wanted. Um, or like I said, if you wanted to bait your pitfall trap in order to catch dung beetles like I did for my masters, you get a plastic fork. This one's already covered in dirt because I used it in my research. Just get a plastic fork, put maybe like a little scoop of dog poop, just, you know, scoop it up and then you would rest the fork on top like so just balance it um, and the poop on the fork would help uh, attract dung beetles to the pitfall trap um, so i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna leave this trap as is uh, so i'm gonna leave this here for a few days and maybe in like two or three days we'll come back and check the trap and see what we caught in it I'm back, it's a few days later now, and it's time to check on the pitfall trap we left in my backyard. Uh, in order to check on your pitfall trap and empty it so you can actually look at the bugs that you caught inside, you'll want some sort of small uh, wire strainer. This is a really teeny tiny kitchen strainer. Uh, don't use kitchen strainers that you're planning on using for people food on your pitfall trap. This is one that I only use for bugs. Um, you might also want a separate container to put the bugs from your pitfall trap into after you've strained them out. Uh, so let's go strain some bugs out of a pitfall trap. Okay, so here we are. We've got our strainer and our container and we're back at our pitfall trap. Uh, so I'm going to remove the wire mesh and put it to the side. Try not to put it in the grass because that's a great way to lose it and then step on it later and that'll hurt. So I usually put it on my knee um, so that I know where it is and I can pick it up and it doesn't become a hazard and then we've got this cup with kind of brownish liquid it rained a little bit and there's some dead bugs in there probably um, so now I'm kind of gonna swirl it a little bit to mix up the bugs that might be stuck on the bottom into the water and then I will pour the water slowly and carefully maybe give it another swirl here through the strainer Uh, yeah, look at all that stuff. All right, awesome. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of mud in the bottom of the cup. Um, but if I kind of swirl the mud around, it doesn't look like there are any other bugs in there, so that's good. If I was doing this for my research project, I would definitely rinse all the mud out to make sure I only got bugs, um, but this is probably fine. Um, so I'll put that to the side for later. Now I've got this strainer full of bugs and a little bit of mud, some leaves. Just tap it into the container, and now, uh, you can see all that good stuff in the container. So let's take this inside and investigate it some more. Okay, uh, so now we're inside at my kitchen table insect sorting workstation because the pandemic means I've been having to do research at home, which is awesome. Um, and I've got two Petri dishes, some forceps, and a big piece of white paper. This is because my kitchen table is a dark color um, and that makes it difficult to see dark colored insects through clear transparent petri dishes. So white piece of paper, and then we pour the bugs into the petri dishes and we can actually see what we're doing. Uh, forceps and petri dishes are really cheap online. Um, so you can definitely do this at home, no problem. Um, but if all you had was like a white bowl or a white plate and like a knife or something, you could still do this just fine. Um, I'm going to start by pouring a little bit of distilled water into this container to sort of mix up and rinse off all of the stuff that's in there. Um, like distilled water because it doesn't have chlorine or other weird stuff that might mess with the bugs. And then I can kind of stir things around, maybe pour a little bit of what we've got 
into the petri dish to take a look. I'm just trying to leave behind a lot of the mud. Um, so in this first petri dish, the water's still really brown and there's a lot of stuff floating. Um, so I will sort of carefully pick out the arthropods of interest and place them over here. Um, so I've already found, um, I know they're really small on the camera, but an ant, a harvestman, and a true bug, which I can kind of hold up to the camera here and play with the focus until, oops, there we go. You can kind of see them, maybe, I don't know. It's hard to move them in the camera. There we go, aha. Yeah, so now you can see some of the stuff I found. And now, of course, I've messed up the focus entirely. There we go. Um, so yeah, let's see if there's anything else uh, really interesting in here. There's another big ant. Some big ants, some very small ants, a few harvestmen, or you might know them as daddy long legs. They're actually not spiders, though. They're in a, an adjacent group of arthropods. Two spiders. Um, so yeah, that looks like a lot of the interesting stuff that's in here. Um, but yeah, a few cool bugs just in one pitfall trap in one backyard for like three days. So imagine how much you could find if you put more pitfall traps out for longer. The things we found in my pitfall trap can go in my personal insect collection, either in some little vials with ethanol or on pins. Uh, but how to make your own insect collection and preserve your specimens is a video for another time. I'm also planning on doing a whole series of videos to teach you how to identify the different arthropods you might find in your backyard, so stay tuned for those. You can definitely try putting pitfall traps in your own backyard, and I would recommend putting them in different locations to see if arthropods prefer different habitats or areas of your yard. If you do put out some pitfall traps and collect arthropods and insects, I'd love to see what you find. Feel free to post pictures on social media and tag me, or you can give me a list of what you found down in the comments section. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Then go check out my Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you like learning about arthropods like the ones we found in these pitfall traps, then you will love the Arta campaign on Nature Check. It's a D&D &D game played by all entomologists. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.